Wait the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. Welcome back to Virtual Tavern, a podcast where we talk about all things sci-fi and fantasy. Welcome back to episode two of the much anticipated, the much fucking uh what just <laughs> you got that my, found? My, <laughs> my mind just went like <laughs> dude, I just saw the fucking buffering symbol <laughs> pop up above your head. I, it, 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 that's it, honestly what happened. The much uh, anticipated, the much uh, I just I was, had a Joe Biden say the same moment. Thing again. I just had a fucking Joe Biden moment right there. <laughs> I need the adrenochrome. Uh, but the mo- much anticipated, you know, episode two of our Cyberpunk 2077 coverage, the game. Uh, we love doing this. We're only episode one in, and we're already having a blast. Mm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, it's it, it it's different than the type of stuff that we've been doing. Yeah, but it's been so fun being able to engage with you guys in a different way like not having to rely on something on the screen playing for us to be like okay oh wait hold on we gotta back up oh look look here look at this scene you know the scene that you guys well i guess now they can see but for the longest time you guys couldn't i know so i mean now technically we're in their shoes because we can edit in footage for them to see we have nothing yes exactly uh we love paper baby (laughs) Uh, we've been looking forward to doing Cyberpunk 2077, the game, for a very long time, ever since we did our Edge Runners content. Dude, um, really? Ever since we started fucking the podcast, like, we knew, the, we knew what was going to happen. Yeah, it, when we're, we knew that this was going to be coming for, like, fucking nine months, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, we're, we're absolutely loving this, and it gives me a reason to play this beautiful game once again, uh, make, a like, a third or fourth playthrough. It's, it's our podcast, baby. Yeah. So, we, well, last we left off, um, we covered the le- different life paths that we can do in the game. You know, we didn't really, like, dig deep into the meat and potatoes of the game yet, just more like the prologue. Yeah, like, we just wanted to try to establish a baseline and get it to where we had something to be able to talk about. Mm-hmm. Without, you know, just immediately mm-hmm. going for the fucking balls. Yeah. We didn't want to be fucking Cinderella, Cinderella just... Oh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, but before we get into that, you know it, you love it, we have our house cleaning shit. Uh, so our house cleaning shit, it's just an opportunity for us to, you know, get th- get some things out of the way, do our plugs and do our talking point recap, e- read emails, all that good stuff. Dude, I've, I've already been doing my plug all day. Your butt plug? Yeah. It ran out of charge about That's half an hour ago. That's why you were limping and you were fucking coming through my front door. Yeah, dude, like, my legs are numb right now. I was walking down the street just, uh, uh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, but the first thing on the chopping block, uh, emails, we have not gotten any emails, but if you would like to send us an email, we would, uh, greatly appreciate it. Our email is contact virtual tavern at gmail.com. If you have a question about cyberpunk 2077 or edge runners or sci-fi in general, we're also covering fantasy Friday, you know, in parallel to this section of the podcast. So if you have a question about Lord of the Rings, uh, we're covering the two towers right now. So send us an email, whatever's on your mind, and we'll read it on the podcast. Absolutely. and. You know, uh, if you guys want, you could also, uh, you could send us how you guys play, like how you guys have gone through, uh, 2077, um, what different choices you made, like which, uh, life paths you like more than others and things like that. So, uh, you know, just reach out and shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah. Let us know what kind of a play style, if you're going to, if you're doing like what we're doing, Mm -hmm. you know, playing the game a second, third or fourth time, what play style are you going for are you doing the same thing that you always do or are you trying something different me personally i always run uh throwing knives and katanas and uh fucking piss silence pistols to get that one tap you know satisfaction that dopamine yep um and i'm a i'm a hacking headshot fucking silence pistol motherfucker so. yeah so uh, this time around i'm doing the whole uh like adrenaline rush you know cyberware basically just the tank yeah you know gorilla arms sledgehammers uh um what else just that whole brute strength you know aspect to the ca- the character class creation you're an animal yeah 
He's an animal, <laughs> and he killed them like animals. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> no, but I'm really looking forward to like picking up people and throwing them against cards and watching their fucking limbs disintegrate. Oh, dude, I know. After you showed me like all the different fatalities that you can do with it, it's yeah. so fucking badass. Yeah, and the sledgehammer, you like go up in the air and you come down like Thor and you create like an earthquake. I'm excited to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but other than that, other than emails. Uh, just throwing this out here real quick. Thank you guys so much for watching our first episode of Cyberpunk Edge Runners, or not Edge Runners, uh, 2077. It catches me every once in a while. Um, thank you guys so much for watching episode one of our coverage of Cyberpunk 2077, the game. Uh, for some reason, Spotify and YouTube really like when we talk about Cyberpunk, whether it be Edge Runners or 2077. It's trendy. <coughs> Excuse me. But oh. hey, I'll fucking take it. Yeah. Also, I'm probably going to cough or sneeze every once in a while. I'm having really bad fucking allergies, so you'll have to forgive me. He's being a bitch. I am being a bitch. But I don't <laughs> want to take Benadryl and just fall asleep within 30 minutes. Um, but anyway, what else do we have? Talking point recaps. Oh, no, I should do our plugs. So also, we if you're watching us, you know, we're either on Spotify or YouTube. We're on several platforms. We're on a, a whole bunch of platforms, but... Uh, if you would like, and it would really help us out, go subscribe to our YouTube, not only because it's the best place to view our content, but you'll get community status updates. Yeah. Um, if for some reason we're going to miss an episode or just, I post funny memes on there right. sometimes, you know, uh, it's just a great way to connect with us. So if you can, and we would greatly appreciate it, go subscribe to our YouTube. We also have a TikTok. Hunter, what is that handle again? Uh, that is virtual underscore tavern underscore podcast. Uh, it's kind of the same thing as far as the shorts go. Um, uh, it's just a different platform. If you're more of a TikToker as opposed to a YouTube short person or whatever, or, you know, YouTube medium, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just a different, a different platform for you guys to be able to enjoy, um, short, short form, little like, uh, Many episodes, basically, of our uh, our show. Yeah, I've been trying to get back into make. <coughs> Excuse me, goddamn. See, I told you he's being a bitch. It's the taste, literally that Tom Cruise song that we were quoting earlier. <laughs> Take my breath away. <laughs> goddamn, <laughs> you shouldn't sing. You're gonna make it worse. I know. Uh, but yeah, I've been trying to get back into making YouTube shorts and everything. Mm -hmm. And now that I have a little bit of time on my hands, I want to go back and like make my own traditional, you know, YouTube shorts that I used to make back in the day. Um, it, it's good fun. Yeah. And now that I'm, I'm getting into video editing, you're, you're going to get some from me too. Yes. Um, but other than that, we have one last thing to cap off our house cleaning shit. It's called a talking point recap. And for those of you that don't know, our talking point recap is just an opportunity for us to reflect on the previous segment or whatever we're covering. So last episode, we obviously covered the different <clears throat> life paths, right? There's, excuse me, there's nomad. There is uh, Corpo, and there is, what was the last one? Street Kid. Street Kid, yeah. So, Hunter, in all three life paths, you get to interact with Jackie Wells in some form. Yeah. My talking point recap for you is, which life path do you think had the greatest first impression with Jackie? Um, that's actually a really good fucking question, because we get to see so many different sides of him, right? right. Like, uh, with the Nomad essentially he's like he's a rival um a rival merc like yeah. you're he, he's needing your help to finish a job but at the same time yeah. like he doesn't want to help share the fucking money or anything like that you start off as adversaries yeah the same thing with the street kids you go to try to break into the car and all of a sudden fucking jackie's pulling a gat on you mm. <laughs> <laughs> um Jackie's got a gun. <laughs> v, you better run. Oh my god. <laughs> um, but honestly, I would say the best impression for me, and it, it very well may be because it's my favorite one, uh, would be the Corpo. Because okay. you get to see uh, that kinder side of Jackie. Like, the side that you normally see from him. Like, right. <clears throat> every once in a while, you get to see him kind of, like, toughen up, which he does in the Corpo one. He, like... Uh, you know, stands up to protect you, right? Because he's really big on um, protecting friends and family and things mm -hmm. like that. But you also get to see the softer side. The other two, uh, it's mainly just like full force all the way. And at the very end, like, all right, we cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I would say the corporal one for me is what I would say is the the best. Uh, yeah. First impression. I do like how he squares up with those guys that come into the bar. Yeah. And he's like. 
do you want to leave here a dead man? He just starts walking closer and closer, you know, squaring up his chest and the corporal guy's stepping, taking steps back. <laughs> yep. You know, I do like that moment. So Jackie has some fucking balls on him, man. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Um, so my talking point recap for you is obviously, you know, like you said, you know, we, we talked about all the different life paths. Mm -hmm. um, which life path was your favorite and what was the most interesting thing from it? My favorite life path is kind of, it's a weird reason, but, and I think we talked about this. My favorite life path is the nomad and excuse me, uh, the nomad, because it does such a good job of building the mm -hmm. world around you, the world building and the, and it kind of builds up the lore too. Yeah. Cause so, you get to see a little bit more than what you would with the other two, like the other two, you're already balls deep in night city. Yeah. So as when you start out as a nomad with V in the origin story, you are exiled from your clan. So you're by yourself. Yeah. You start off in this little rinky dink fuck hut town. I can't remember what the call what it's called. I can't either. I just remember that you start out in a fucking mechanic shop. Yeah. And you're trying to make your way to Night City to like make a new life for yourself. Yeah. You're basically buying into the lie that a lot of other people tell on the countryside. Like Night City is the place to like rebirth yourself. Yeah, in a sense, like you're <laughs> you're kind of doing like a Pan Am kind of thing. You got kicked out of your clan, so now you're going to Night City as like a last resort kind of thing to help yeah. rebuild your life. Yeah. And I like how um when you're approaching Night City, you get to learn about like their border <laughs> patrol policies and like how they don't just let anybody in from outside their perimeter. Because technically, like the countryside is like a wasteland. Is it because of the wall? Do they have a wall that helps? They, they to do have a wall. That? They do have a wall, and it's much better than our border, border <laughs> policies. But from what I understand of this universe, right, you have major mega cities, and then the countryside, the rural areas, are just wastelands. Yeah, you know, lawless, you know, sections of the country where there's no police, there's no enforcement. It's just you know, nomads and bandits and ghosts and goblins and shit yeah it's the wild wild wastelands it, <laughs> don't make me laugh <laughs> god damn it but i just like the nomad um <clears throat> intro the most because of the world building you know you get to learn more about like night city and the culture you get to learn about the nomads and the way you meet jackie is really cool you meet in like this fucking abandoned little trailer and you try to bribe your way into night city you get into a car chase which yep. is pretty cool. It just presents you that right at the beginning of the game. You get a fucking, a fucking awesome ass uh, car chase where you're getting chased by drones. Yep. And then you take shelter in then like this abandoned storage unit, or I don't is, was it Jackie's storage unit? Uh, I don't I don't think it was Jackie's, but it was like a it was like a storage unit mm -hmm. or a garage or something, just something up out of the way because you're not like in Night City yet either. You're still on the outskirts. Yeah, and it turns out the item that they were smuggling was an iguana. Yeah. So it, that's even more world building telling you that endangered species are like worth hundreds of thousands of dollars Yeah, in this universe. And I still think it's really cool that you have the option to collect that fucking egg. I'm pissed though because mine still hasn't fucking hatched. I'm sure there's a mod you can, well, you're on console. I'm on console. Yeah, you have to wait fucking forever in order for it to hatch. Yeah. So I think that's all of our talking about recaps and everything. So yeah, my favorite one is just the Nomad. Um, to kind of, you know, as we dig deep into our episodes and everything, get back into our coverage. So we did our different life paths. I'm doing Corpo to reiterate mm -hmm. and Hunter, you're doing, which one are you doing right now? I'm doing Corpo too. Okay. So we're Wait. both doing Corpo. Yeah, I am doing Corpo. <laughs> okay. So we, we both did the Corpo play style. Um, Hunter, what kind of play style are you going to go for this time around? Quick hacks again? Um, yeah, it's mainly mm -hmm. going to be, uh, silenced pistols, like focused on headshots and, um, quick hacks oh, okay. so actually with the uh, footage that i got for us you'll be able to see a little <laughs> bit of that um it's going to be a lot more present in my uh gameplay later on like when i you're actually able to start like right upgrading everything and um setting things up the way you're supposed to yeah or the way that you uh desire but i actually totally forgot that there was even a fucking thing in that first mission i was yeah. like most of the way through i was like wait hold on i have I have quick X. You have, okay, I have quick, quick X. X. You have like one, and it's like ping and fucking like, what is it? Uh, you have ping, um, something else in short circuit. Yeah, that's like all you have. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> all right. So 
digging deep back into Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, we had our awesome ass in little intro montage where, you know, we start a new life regardless of what our origin story is. We all get the same cutscene. Yep. It's you and Jackie building a name for yourself in Night City, doing, you know, jobs for Padre. You know, you're fucking taking down dealers. You're getting guns. You're fucking. Excuse me. I'm really trying to control my coughs here, people, but it's fucking bad. Why are you laughing? I'm suffering over here. <laughs> That's what makes it funny. <laughs> My pain brings you joy. <laughs> but he's a masochist. He, he masochist. masochist. <laughs> oh no. But we all get the same cutscene, right? And then it ends off with some a mission called the rescue. So for this episode, guys, uh, we're gonna be covering the rescue. Mm. We're gonna be covering the Ripper Dock and the the drive. I believe those three missions. Yeah. So after the rescue. The Ripper Dock and the Drive are very short, but they're very dialogue heavy. They are incredibly dialogue heavy. And there's a lot for us to talk about, even though the missions are only like 10, 15 minutes a pop. Yeah. And they're very easy, very quick. Yeah, like, um, that's, kind of, that's one of the reasons why I only recorded the um, first mission, the rescue, because the others, they're just very dialogue heavy. And um, your dialogue options, they don't make a whole lot of difference in this. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to, like, change which way things go, so... Rather than have it to where there's two of us recording the exact same fucking thing, I just yeah. said, fuck it, and mm -mm. recorded what was going to be, you know, obviously different for you guys. It's going to actually suck a little bit for these first few missions because we start off very similar, you know, with just the basic ass pistol and everything. Yeah. But as we progress with our episodes, our play styles will start to diverge and the, the recordings will be a little bit more different and dynamic. Yeah, that once we're able to really start mm -mm. like getting into our character and, um, you know, leveling up and upgrading, that's when you're really going to start to see more of a difference. Like, I mean, honestly, even with how we run it, it'll kind of probably be different. Um, yeah. Like, I can tell you the first time that I ever went through it, I was very much so, like, just shooting from cover. And now, yeah. because, like, I've gotten adapted to just running around with a pistol, like, I, I went... I walked through that yeah. fucking front area, dude. I didn't give a fuck. It's like, cool. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. I realized how spoiled... I was with Sendevistan because <laughs> this first mission, I, I think I'm on like the, the hard difficulty or medium at, at the lowest. Yeah. You know, um, this, ep this fucking mission almost killed me. I got really cocky and I tried to like activate my Sendevistan. I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> and I overexposed myself and I, I got the red health bar and the fucking screen started glitching. I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. I had to retrain my brain. Like all I have is my pistol. That's literally all I have. So the rescue you don't know who the client is, but you know um, that you're here to, you're in this like abandoned fucking hotel, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, there's like one or two people living there, but it's, <clears throat> it's a very like, uh, skeevy, like it, it's like a, a um, a apartment from the fucking, it's in the, like the poor district. Yeah. Um, so like. There's a lot of scavs and things like that, which is actually who you're going after um, to try to save the client, which is uh, Sandra Dorset. Yes. So you're here to rescue a one Sandra Dorset, and you go up the elevator and up, 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 the, up you the elevator we go and we're introduced for the first time to a new character, T-Bug. Yeah. So T-Bug is our group net runner and we don't know anything about her right now. She wasn't in the montage that I don't think. Um, not that I can remember, no. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, too. I don't think she was in the montage at all, but uh, she's an African-American woman, and she, like, has a net running suit and everything, and she's got a bit of an, an, an attitude on her. Uh, she's a sassy bitch. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> she's she's the group net runner. She's like, all right, giving you the details for the mission. Sandra Dorset, her fucking comms are offline, you know. Her yeah. uh, trauma package should have activated, but they must have put a jammer on or whatever. Yep. So you're, the contract is through a fixer called Wakako. Yeah. And she's a, she's the leader of the Tiger Claws and she's a, I think a Japanese woman. Yeah. And what's kind of fucked up about that is the Tiger Claws, like no matter where you run into them, they want to fuck you up. Like, yeah. Everywhere. But considering the fact that you're, I mean, I get you're just kind of a merc, but she also like seems to hold you into a special place in her heart. Mm -hmm. Like. Because, you know, you end up getting uh, a special bonus once this mission is done, which right. we'll talk about here in a sec. Um, and just the way that she treats you, it doesn't feel like that's how she would treat most mercenaries. So you'd think yeah. that, like, 
the tiger claws might fuck off just a little bit, but no, they're just like, hey, I see you. Isn't it weird how in Night City we kill so many members of these gangs and the fixers don't care? Yeah. Like, you kill lots of Valentinos, you kill lots of Tiger Claws, and if you go see Padre, he's like, hey, what's up, man? Yeah. You go see, uh, you know, Wakako, she's like, oh, I love you, let me suck your caco. <laughs> oh, you want rice bowl? Shut up. <laughs> so they're in, the ele- they're in the elevator, you know, getting details from T-Bug, and this is your first introduction to combat. You go down the whole corridor, you can tell, like, one of the tenants, like, get back in your room, and you get to, pe- you get to quick hack the door to open it up. Yep. And you go in, and you're I'm immediately greeted by a woman that's been like disemboweled, and her rib cage is opened up. Yep. And these are the scavs, uh, Hunter. Why don't you tell me about the scavs? So the scavs are they're <laughs> a group that basically will try to um, either lure people that clearly have some kind of uh, implant, uh, you know, into one of their layers, or they'll just straight up capture you, drag you there, and they rip your implants out. They'll kill you, and then sell your parts off. Um, basically just for scrap. Exactly. Um, we got to see them in edge runners a little bit, not much, but just a tiny bit, tiny bit. Yeah. The ambulance driver, I think was a member of the scavs. Oh, at 100%. Cause she immediately was like, Oh, I see it. I want it. Yeah. It's mine. It's yeah. mine. Yeah. And then there's a few montage clips where, you know, the, the group, David's group get, take down a few members of the scavs too. Yeah. They have a very signature holographic, like face masks that cover up their identity and have like, little blood stains around the eyes and mouth and everything try to look menacing yeah um so you go past the woman that's been disemboweled and this is your first time to uh have some stealth combat yep you get to grab the guy you know fucking smash his head on the fucking refrigerator and then throw his ass in yep uh this was the level that was highly advertised in the e3 um advertisements and the promo material yeah so this whole mission has a lot of scripted events but they're pretty cool yeah like you get you get to be introduced to a to combat. I mean, it's very very linear, but yeah, <clears throat> being able to see all the different mechanics that you can do, like for example, how you were saying, <clears throat> Jesus, uh, it's spreading. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fuck's I saying? Oh, so the mechanics. Yeah, the mechanics. Like as you were saying, you know, you get to fucking. You bash that dude's fucking head into the the freezer, open it up, and then stash his body. Yeah, I fucking stash bodies all the fucking time. Um, so like it, it's cool to be able to see that so early on in the game, and then, uh, you know, you go further down the hallway, and Jackie starts telling you, "Oh, that they're coming, Mono. We gotta, we gotta take these yep. guys out." So you go hide in the corner, and two guys come around. So you guys sneak back over there, and he tells you to kill the. Uh, uh, the closest guy. I never do that. I always go for the one that's further out. Why? I have no fucking idea. Oh, you you can let those guys walk into that room where you killed the guy? Um, the, the first one? So, like, there's... Because I just go in guns blazing. You let them walk into that hallway, right? Uh-huh. And they stop at, like, the room that's right across from you. Uh-huh. If they went through that doorway, then they'd be in the room the other guy is. So there's, like, there's <clears> this <throat> room here, door... Uh, kind of looks like a like a kitchen or a bathroom kind of area. Okay. Uh, and you let them walk over there. One of them stands in front of the sink, and one of them is facing like a tub or something. And you guys can sneak over there together and what? kill them. Yeah, I didn't know, you didn't that. know that. No, oh, because shit. as soon as I go through the hallway, I see the two guys there, and I immediately take my chance and I pop one in the head, and that's when combat starts for me. Interesting. I've always taken them out stealthily. I didn't know that was an option. Yeah, if you let them, that's like, pretty you, cool. You just hang out to the side. And they'll walk past you, and you can just fucking break their necks. See, I learned something every day. (laughs) Uh, So combat ensues. All you have in this moment is the Unity pistol and your bare fists. Um, So combat is pretty basic and linear in this mission, you know? Yeah. You don't really have any tools at your disposal, but it's the first mission, you know? Yeah, you know, you gotta start off somewhere, and at least they give you the Unity. Like, it's it's a reliable gun. Yeah, it's fun. It feels good. It's a good feeling weapon to use. Feels good in the hand, feels good on the cock. Oh, Jesus. So you enter this big room where there's about five or six scavs. You take them out, but there's this big ass motherfucker with a minigun in the back. Yep. And he's constantly pelting you guys, and uh, he's suppressing fire and everything. And T Bug is like, I know a way around. And Jackie's, no, Jackie's saying, I need you to distract him, Romano. And T Bug opens up like these uh, shutters, and you go through the shutters. 
and you go into like this little side room and you take a few pop shots at the big guy. He turns his attention and that's just enough of an opening for uh, Jackie to just full on linebacker tackle that fucker. And he just gives him one big ass punch in the head and it kills him. That's an option? You didn't know that? <laughs> no. Dude, so there's the hole that he's shooting at you from when yeah. you f- first enter the room with the rest of the guys, like the, the room that your two guys walk out of. Yeah. I shoot him through the fucking hole. Like, I fight him from that room. I just oh. have it to where he fucking stays in there. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'll pop you whenever you pop out. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm, I can't believe you didn't know that. Yeah, it's a, it's a really cool scripted sequence where you what go into- fuck? It, there's a pair of shutters to the left. And T-Bug opens them, you go through, and then you can kind of see the guy with the minigun through s- some, like, debris, you know, fucking the, uh, uh, de- a rubbled wall. You take a few pop shots, he turns his attention, and Jackie just, uh, <laughs> linebacker tackles him, sends him back, and he just gives him, girl <laughs> and it kills him instantly. So Jackie's a fucking beast. Jackie smash! <laughs> yeah, he's basically the Hulk. So... However, you take out the minigun guy. See, see, we're both learning different ways that you can take down fucking jobs. Huh? Who would have guessed? Like there, there is actually going to be some difference for you guys to see. <laughs> uh, so you kill the main big bad guy, and you go into the side room, and there's a bathtub mm-hmm. with ice cubes and you know water and everything. And there's two bodies in there. Yeah, we don't know who the man is, and it's not really that important. But Sandra Dorset is there. They're both fully naked and everything. Yep. So. Why do you think they were put in a bathtub with ice? Um, probably to keep their their <laughs> body temperatures down. Um, I will bet they were like trying to hack into their system, and they needed and, them cold. Yeah, like that's the the reason that um when people go like deep diving into the net, yeah, and they start net running, like they have to go into ice baths because their bodies start to heat up. Yeah, I remember that from Edge Runners. So I'm willing to bet it was kind of something similar, especially with her having. As high as shit as she did. Like, I mean, her trauma, her trauma scene package is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, she has, like, tier five trauma package. Like, you know, if she stubs a toe, like, a SWAT team's gonna show up. Basically, yeah. So, I'm willing to bet along with that, she also has a very heavy level of ice and things like that. So, it's gonna take time to be able to crack through it. So, in order to get through the ice, you gotta stick her in ice. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I knew you could do something like that. Ice, ice baby. <laughs> but no, but it makes sense. Like, maybe the scavs couldn't just fucking kill her and take out the cybernetics because then this, maybe her cybernetics, like you said, were so firewalled and protected that they had to be breached. Otherwise, they'd be useless. Yeah. So maybe they were keeping her, you know, sedated until they found a way to breach the security and like jailbreak the cyberware. But they, they, if, but if she died, you know, the cyberware would be useless. Yeah. So like, they, like you said, they had to keep her body cold like she was in a fucking deep dive. Yeah. Um, and I wonder too, maybe uh maybe they weren't necessarily planning on like scavenging her body. Maybe they were trying to hold her for ransom or something and needed Ooh. to keep it to where uh, you know, her vitals and shit were just fucking kept on a that's low a, level. That's another possibility. She was a corpo, I believe. Yeah. So you take Sandra Dorset out of the tap the tub. You plug in with your your personal link, you know. Yeah. Everybody in Night City has like this little fucking uh, USB cable that you could pull out of your your data link and like yeah. sync up. This or fucking... no, it's on your wrists. Yeah, it's it's it comes out of your wrists, and then there's a a port on your neck that you can plug links into. Okay, so the the male end comes out of your wrist, and the <clears throat> female end is on your neck somewhere. Yeah, it's like right here. Roughly. Okay. Not here or here so much, but, but right, right here. <laughs> I don't know how we made a, a fucking Chris Farley Tommy Boy reference in Cyberpunk, but we did it. Not here we did it. or we here did so it. much, but right here. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. I'm going to add that clip in post edit. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> right here. Not here or here so much, but right here. Nope. Ship shape. But what was I saying? So you you jack into Sandra Dorset. It turns out she has a bunch of security. A T bug gets to work on that, and it turns she's like starting to flatline and everything. Her fucking body is spasming out, spasming out. And you say, Jackie, fucking hypo, or is it is it called hypo? Yeah, or, yeah. He throws you a little hypo. These are basically the med kits of this universe. Yeah, you have like stims that fucking like boost your body with adrenaline and all these different concoctions. You jam it into Sandra Dorset's chest. And she has a gas. She's not conscious yet, but she's alive. Yeah, like she's at least still breathing. Mm-hmm. 
because you know she it's like we said like, she was very very close to dying which does kind of go back to the whole thing of um you know why she was on ice because as soon as her body got fucking pulled out that's when she started mm. flatlining that's probably why now that i think about it yeah is when she was pulled out her fucking body temperature just skyrocketed yeah so you get her body temperature un under control you contact max tech or not max tech um uh, trauma team yeah um because you well, while you have your personal link put uh shoved in there she uh, t-bug's telling you you know oh she has uh there's something jamming or you gotta take her fucking take the the chip out of her neural port. yeah so you unplug it and that's when all of a sudden her her mm -hmm. uh bio monitor starts reading like oh hey we noticed that you were fucked up Trauma team's on their way. We, uh, we will your, cover ninety percent of this expenses. Yeah, your premium package will cover ninety percent of the cover or the the uh, expenses of your treatment. Yeah. So you go out onto the balcony. You're carrying Sandra Dorset's body, and all I got to say is jiggle physics. Damn. I know, dude. First <laughs> you got to jack in, then you start walking her to the fucking thing, and I started jacking. Off. Yeah, it's like I wish I had a hand free. God damn it! But uh, you take Sandra Dorset's body to the balcony. Or we, or just say it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't have to say anything. I was making sound effects. Oh, you take Sandra. Dor <laughs> you're carrying Sandra Dorset to the balcony, and immediately a uh, trauma team shows up within fucking like a minute. And I love how they like project a holographic light to show the mm -hmm. landing zone. Yeah. It says like stay clear. It, that I think that was a really cool fucking detail. Yeah, I I liked too that uh, it portrayed them as being mm -hmm. like enforcers like security team, yeah they're basically. not nice people no go sit the fucking body there now go back to the doorway <laughs> yeah one of the fucking trauma team they're both there's like four of them they're all pointing guns at you yeah even though you're trying to help and you one of them's like put the body on the gurney now it's like you're not even put the body halfway down and he's like five steps back now throws you the fuck back fuck yeah dude he fucking full-on shoves your ass yeah but it is pretty cool. They take Sandra Dorset and they take her into the the hovercraft and they start saying what kind of drugs they're administering and everything. Yep. It just makes the world feel alive, you know. Yeah, it makes it feel a little bit more realistic because they're giving out they're giving out measurements. They're using um I recognized at least two of the medications that they gave her. I can't remember them off the top of my head. It was but dop dopamine was one of them. Dopamine was one of them. Um so it just makes it to where there's there's more of like a scientific thing rather than just like, well, it's fucking sci-fi that kind of makes sense yeah but you know what i mean like it's it's not all just fucking make-believe bullshit yeah so that's pretty much the end of the mission you go back to the elevator um well not exactly well i mean there's the ride home yeah so oh well i, I was gonna get into that and everything but that's oh, the, that's the end of the action i should say yeah so that's the end of the action for this mission now we get into probably my favorite part and my favorite uh cut scenes and everything of this this game so you go down the elevator you're getting into contact with wakako she's like job well done at a boy you know good boy uh come pick up your payment later and yeah uh, come, come grab it at your leisure but just so you know watson's locked down right now yes and so watson um is just one district in night city there are several um yeah there's watson there's fucking why am I drawing a blank right now? There's, there's, there's the, there's the inner city where Arasaka has all the corpo buildings and everything. The city yeah. center. There's, I can't remember all the names off the top of my head for it. Yeah. So you're, you're in Watson for whatever reason, NCPD is locking the shit down. They're locking down all the bridges and everything. And you, you're wanting to get home. So you're like, oh shit, Jackie, put the, put the fucking pedal to the metal. And you let Jackie drive because he wants to take the car later to, uh, go pick up his date Misty. Yeah. Um, and on the way there, uh, Jackie starts noticing a van is following you guys. Yes. And he's like, oh fuck, there's, there's someone tailing us. Turns out you guys have scabs on your ass. Yeah. You, it, yeah. You didn't kill all the scabs <clears throat> when you were in the mission. Yeah. So it's a scripted sequence. You're going to survive no matter what, but it's still immersive, immersive, man. Yeah. Like, um, you take so many fucking rounds. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of fun for me to do it this time because I've gotten so used to using pistols and things. Like, I fucking annihilated them with fucking ease. Like, blap, blap, blap. Oh, yeah, dude. It was fucking 
awesome. <laughs> I killed him so fast. So this game opens up with a banger. You get to have a nice little high speed chase. It's it's scripted, but fuck it, man. It's immersive. Enjoy. It. Sit down in the moment and you know bask in it. Yeah, like that's that's a lot of what this game is. Is just being able to immerse yourself into the this amazing uniform or uniform jesus christ this amazing universe that exactly. they created um so like it, it really helps like pull you from your day-to-day -day life to being this fucking badass mercenary yes. just fucking shit up so hunter this opening scene where you're driving with jackie and you're just the passenger side you're just the passenger you're looking out the glass windows and you go you leave the garage you have the high-speed chase and you're just looking at night city it is so beautiful this scene is what made me fall in love with this game. It did such a good job with first impressions. You get to see skyscrapers. You get to see neon advertisement signs. It's raining. It's dark. It's gloomy. But, you know, it contrasts with the brightness of fucking neon signs and advertisements. It's pure cyberpunk encapsulated. Yeah. And I just love the detail of the city. It's so well done. Um, and then you have the... You have the interaction okay. with the Max Tax Squad. That was fucking cool. Yeah, the one of the parts that I really like is when you're first trying to get across the bridge, and the female officer walks over. So fucking. Uh, oh, I forgot Jackie, that comes first. Your boy is like he's sitting there trying to sweet talk her. Oh no, I'm just trying to get home. You see my my lady. She's she's gonna be worried if I don't make it. Yeah. And you know, finally, after a couple of minutes, you guys start taking off. And he's like, wow, I think she really liked me. Of yeah. course. Uh, uh, it's because she could see the passion. The yeah. passion I have for my woman. Yeah. Jackie's just fucking comedic, right? He's got he's a, a heart. He's a fucking great character. And I'm sad that we don't get to see him for like nearly as long as I would have wanted. I know. He, he's got such charisma. He's got such yeah, charm. Yeah. He's, you can tell he's got a heart of gold. But he honestly will fuck you up if you cross him too. He's not a pushover. Yeah. You know. Uh, I forgot that that part comes first. I got to the max tack part a little early, but right after that, you have the max tack part where Fuck, dude. It, such a good first impression of showing you this city's version of the SWAT team. Um, so you have, you go up to like a stoplight, right? And there's like the three goons trying to get into a car mm -hmm. and max tack just happened to be around in the area. And the three goons start shooting at the fucking hover <laughs> car. It does nothing. Yeah. And these max tech squads jump down and they're like, uh, I guess I'm bored. I'll guess I'll kill you. It's yeah. just like what Jackie said, just a mid time snack for them. Exactly. Like to them, they're nothing more than fucking chew toys. Like, cool. This is going to be okay. fun for fucking two seconds. And then, uh, we're going to be on our way. Pretty much like, so max tech in this universe, we got to see them in edge runners a little bit, but I yeah. think the game does a lot better justice to showing how powerful max tech is. Yes. So max tech are this universe's version of SWAT team, but on steroids. Yeah, they're fucking insane. Basically, like, these guys are more or less, um, they're like minor versions of Adam Smasher to a certain degree. Like, they yes. basically have fucking cyber psychosis. They have the highest <clears throat> top dollar cybernetics that money can buy without turning them cyber psycho. Yeah. Like, like they're, they're on that fucking brink. Yeah. They, They're kind of like David just before he got into the fucking suit, more or less. Yeah, some of them have Sam Devastan of their own. Yeah. Some of them, you know, have gorilla arms. They have robotic arms and limbs. They can quick hack you, shut you the fuck down. Yep. They have net runners. They have fucking muscle. They have basically every cyberware you can fucking think of. Yep, they have just a little bit of everything. Mantis little, blades. Little dusting. Yeah. Wow. Uh, they have mantis blades, too. Yeah. So they have literally everything. So... Imagine like Skyrim, right? You're level 99 max level. That's what these guys are. Yeah. And right now they're like coming across, you know, a fucking encampment of level one bandits. And they're like, I guess I'm bored. What else are we going to do? So they drop down, completely annihilate the guys. They're not, don't even make a dent in them. Yeah. <coughs> like one of them basically gets fucking blown in half. Yeah. And uh, fucking Jackie's like, well, they had it coming, you know, just a midday snack for them. Uh, Night City's Apex Predators. It's a great first impression to Max Tack. Yeah, and then like once the action's all fucking said and done, you're waiting at the stoplight, right? And there's that the one fucking beefy Max Tack guy starts walking towards you. It's like, hey, get the fuck gone. Get yeah. the fuck gone. And you're maybe like, oh shit. Oh yeah. shit. Yeah, you better get the fuck out of there. It's like if he gets irritated at all, he'll just kill you. Yeah, dude. Like 
what are you gonna fucking do? You're gonna be dead. There's yeah. no one gonna be. There's no one gonna be there to fucking be like, oh no, he didn't. He didn't shoot. He was just driving. Yeah, they they kind of remind me of like Judge Dredd, like the judges from that universe. Kind of. I can I can see that. They're judge, jury, and executioner. Like if you look at them the wrong way and they have an excuse, they'll just kill you. Hey man, ain't my fault. That <laughs> motherfucker looked at me sideways. Oh my god. But uh, yeah, you go up to the parking garage and everything. And you get some rest. Jackie takes his your car for a date with Missy and everything. Uh, you go to your apartment and you take a nice little rest. You take a nice little snooze and you wake up. Uh, Jackie's calling you immediately saying, hey, what the fuck? You know, wake, wake up, you piece of shit. Wake up. Why did you put a little makeup? makeup? <laughs> <laughs> Jackie calls you, said, hey, come down. I'm get. I got some food ready, you know. And this is such a cool sequence. You leave your apartment building mm. and you V lives in a mega building. Yeah. So it's basically a huge ass apartment complex with thousands of people living in it. You know, very dystopian, very sci-fi where lots of people are crammed together in these huge fucking buildings and it creates like these little tiny mini cultures and shit. Yeah. And what's kind of cool about it too is that they almost have kind of like a, a strip mall kind of thing because there's there are stores all the way throughout it like yeah. the gun stores on the same level mm -hmm. as your apartment um when you go down below there's like different food courts and things that yeah. you go to so it's really cool to be able to to see it <laughs> and one thing that i really like about your apartment itself yeah is you know you get ready to go and one of the things that you have to do is go get dressed so you look at your wardrobe you pick clothes whatever mm -hmm. Uh, unless you want to just walk out there fucking dick swinging. Uh, I did that my first playthrough by accident. <laughs> um, but next to your wardrobe is your stash. It's like a little fucking, I mean, it's not hidden, but it's a locked door where yeah. you can go store all of your items. And I believe once you get like legendary items, if you store it in there, you'll see it like up on the walls and stuff. Yeah, it, it gives you some a, a strong semblance of, you know, completionism and, and like reward. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to see the fruits of your label, you know, labor. Um, and <laughs> it's like, your label. <laughs> it's like Skyrim, right? You know, you can collect all the dragon priest masks and fucking put them on the wall and shit. And exactly the Daedra artifacts, you put them on the walls and shit. And it's just a reminder of all your adventures and shit and shit. I know. I kept <laughs> and shit. I say that a lot. I know. Fuck off. <laughs> but yeah, it's like you said, you go through the mall complex, you pass some restaurants, you pass, uh, the boxing guy who apparently is good friends with you. I can't remember his name. Uh, I, it's coach something. I always just call him coach. I think it's Fred, coach Fred. Oh, coach Fred. Yeah. Okay. So his name is coach Fred. You pass him. He's like, Hey V, how about a boxing match and everything? Yeah. He's a, uh, he's a tan version of Durst. Yeah. You pass him and you also pass the second amendment store where it's this big fucking fat, you know, gunsmith guy is working there. Yeah. Uh, Wilson. Wilson. Wilson! Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a quest that you can do for him, and he gives you a really good starting gun. Um, so, I have tried, and I have tried, and I have tried. I can't fucking beat hit that goddamn mission. Why? You just suck at aiming? D I only get, like, fucking 30 or 40 hits. Like, literally, maybe it's that I need to have my, my uh, sensitivity higher. I shoot every target and I get two bullets into each one. I can't fucking do it. Wah, I can't wah, get to a hundred. Um, no gun for you. But because I think it's because I have the DLC, um, I get a decent starting gun from him anyway. Oh, really? It's, it's called like the Nighting, Nightingale or something like that. Does it have a, a bayonet on it? Yeah. That's the one we're, we're thinking of, I think. The same one. Oh, really? You get that for doing the, the shooting range? I think so. Interesting. Yeah, no, I get that shit for free. Oh, fuck you then. <laughs> but you pass him, you go down the elevator, and I love how the elevators, as you're waiting, they have a bunch of TV screens with newsreels and everything, and it, it just does a good job of, it, like, naturally showing you the world around you, and not forcing it down your throat, but like, hey, as you're doing these things, you're, you're watching TV screens, and you're getting, you, you get to be immersed in the world. Well, dude, on top of that, too, like, okay. the loading screens, they change oh, yeah. depending on where you're at, and they'll talk about shit you've done. Oh, yeah, when you're loading in, you know, loading a save game, there's a newsreel editors that talk about world events in concurrent with your progress in the main story. Yeah, like, it's, it's cool to see that they managed to find a way to incorporate that, 
to where even before you actually get back into the game, you're in the game. Yeah, it, it immerses you even before you've even fucking put your feet on the ground. Yeah, exactly. So I've that's one of the things that I feel like they did a really good fucking job with because no other game has ever done that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Skyrim had the statues that you rotate and everything. Well, I mean, I guess there's that, but like those are always like randomly generated. You know, they'll oh. they'll throw they'll just throw something at you. Like it's not something that you yourself caused that oh, the game okay. is now like here. Remember you did this? I see what you mean now. Yeah, like it. You get to see your influence on the world. So you go down the elevator, and now you're on the street level. And man, this is one of the most beautiful shots. And they did this deliberately, right? This is your home. This is where you're going to be coming out of the a lot of the time. This is your home. You too good for your home. Answer Answer me. me. (laughs) But you. And this was heavily advertised in the marketing as well, right? You leave the apartment building, and you just. You see the metro up above. You see signs. You see fucking street lights. Lots of crowd density. It's a very focal point. You know, lots of shit's happening in this, you know, field of, vo- of view. Yeah. Um, and it's a beautiful shot. And you get to go, you hear someone in your corner. You're like, hey, V, I was wondering when you'd be up. And turns out Jackie is on a noodle stand that's right there at the steps of the fucking building. Yeah. And I love this. And I wish there was more, um, sequences like this where you can just go to a random ramen noodle stand and just sit on the chair and eat ramen noodles and shit yeah because just be able to really um immerse yourself even deeper into yeah into the world itself like is the the food gonna do anything for you no because i've downloaded mods in the past where you can actually talk to the street vendors wherever you go and buy food from them oh cool yeah but I wish you had the animation where you actually sit on the chair and you actually f- fucking with your own bare hands, you know, eat, you know, uh, ramen or, you know, what was it? Teriyaki balls on a stick. Yeah. Kebabs or whatever the hell they are. And the food in this game looks so fucking good. Oh, dude, I know. And there's there's so few times where you actually get to sit down and see anyone eat. Like, I think <clears throat> you as a character, you get to eat once. Yeah. And it's it's a way down the... Uh, the main story where I think it's where you have to meet up with uh, Takamura. Isn't it the parade? Uh, yeah, you I eat think a it's, it's around one of those times. Yeah, you're like sitting. Um, it actually might be the one in front of your house. I can't remember. Mm. But um, yeah, you get a you can choose to eat the meatball. You get a drink more than you get to eat, which personally I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> don't mind if I do. But it's a really awesome sequence. You get to sit down with Jackie. And it's, man, it's immersive. You have this cool conversation on this little ramen noodle stand. Uh, if you play with, um, what was it? What, it's like FOV. It's, it's when the background is like blurred out and the foreground is uh, sharpened and like in focus. Depth uh, of field? Yeah. Okay, that's what I was trying to think of. When you're in conversations in this game, depth of field activates and it's, it makes the whole game look fucking beautiful. Yeah, like, you focus on whoever it is that's talking to you, which is really cool, because, like, it shows just, like, how much V will actually pay attention. Yeah. You can still see me. kind of what's going around, but when he's talking to somebody, he's fucking, he's it's, engaged. It's, he's cinem- there. it's cinematic, is yeah. what it is. You know, it's not even a cutscene, but, be- you know, because of these conversations and the way the game is built, it looks so beautiful. Yeah, and what's kind of cool, too, is with all of these different dialogue sequences and things, as long as it's not a... Uh, a structured like literal cutscene. Mm-hmm. You get a fucking look around. Like they can be talking to you and just be, oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and it, your your depth will your uh depth perception will change to where what was blurry is now clear. It's in focus. And if they're yeah. fucking over in your um uh field of view, your blind spot. I'm I'm, I'm blanking on the fucking <laughs> word. Um, if they're over in like you know that section, they then become blurred. Yeah. So, uh, Jackie is filling you in. Like, I just got, you know, worn on a nice J-O-B. And he's been contacted by, well, one Dexter Deshaun. And if I remember right, Dexter Sh- Deshaun is kind of like the new kid on the block. He's like a new fixer to Night City, from what I, I gathered. I don't know, because the way that, the way Jackie talks about him, he's like, you know, I mean, he literally calls him the black Jesus of the afterlife. <laughs> yeah, he like, does, huh? Uh, you know, he's this, this big head honcho uh and even like when you go to uh vic later on like as soon as you mentioned Dex- dexter Deshaun, like he knows about him so yeah he's well known but right. he's not 
it's he's not on the same level as like say Rogue. No, Granted, Rogue. Rogue is, Rogue's a legend. She's yeah. been around for a long time. So Dexter Deshaun, he's a a big African American man. He's got a uh, big boy. He's got a golden arm and everything. And oh, you probably didn't recognize me because of the golden arm. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> we don't talk about Rise of Skywalker. Uh, no, that was Force Awakens. Wasn't uh, it? that was Force Awakens. No, yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. What? The red arm? It was the Rise of Skywalker because R two wouldn't have. R two gets turned on at the end of Force Awakens. It's no. like one of the tail. The, one of the. Tail end scenes. No, it was force. It was force awakens. It was. I'm you gonna fucking look it up right now. I was now. gonna say, you know, we're gonna Google this out of the podcast. Yes, we right? are. Anyway, back to the thing. So Jackie's saying we just got a job from Dexter Deshaun and everything, and uh, he didn't give me the deets, but he wants to be in contact later. And so V, he needs to upgrade his cyberware. He's running very basic shit. Oh, that's. I don't think we mentioned that either. When you jacked into. Uh, Sandra Dorset, you get a virus. Oh, that's right. Um, v wakes up disoriented and he's like, I think I got something. I need to go down to Vix. Well, even like while you're still jacked into her, like you start seeing weird shit pop up on your uh, display. That's right. Yeah. And you mentioned something to T Bug, like, I think I, I think I caught something. Yeah. You know, you got fucking virtual crabs or some bullshit. <laughs> and <you> virtual <laughs> crabs. <laughs> you got to go get that shit cleared out. So, um, you know, you go down there and, uh, like you said, you know, Jackie was waiting for you. He's telling you about yeah. the job and all that. Ooh. And, uh, he had his friend fix your car up for you to buff all the scratches that's, and shit out from that, the, uh, running with the scabs the night before. That's right. He says, drives, drives like a dream, practically brand new. Yeah. Um, so he finally finishes eating. He gives you all the details like, you know, uh, big man. Big man wants to meet you, but first we probably got to get you taken care of because you got this the virus bullshit going on. Yeah. And what I've always thought is hilarious about it is we just watched him down a giant bowl of fucking noodles. Yeah. You get in the car and he's like, oh man, but take it easy. Still full from lunch or whatever the fuck <laughs> yeah. it is that he says. Like, as soon as he said, take it easy, the first one, I'm like, fuck you. I <laughs> just gassed the just shit gassed out of it. it, dude. So you go down to Vex and it's only like a block away. It's very close by. Yeah, that's one thing that's really nice about um, some of these main areas that you have to go to. If you're at your house, they're right around the corner. Yeah. Like, luckily, they they made your house a very convenient spot for a lot of these missions. Yes, very central point. Yeah, exactly. So you go to Vix, and he's what's called a Ripper Dock. So if you're not like super in tune with Cyberpunk, a Ripper Dock is basically someone that will implant cyberware in you. Um, and just like you know, rip you up, rip and tear. Yeah. Um, they can, um, at least as far as the game goes, like they can install new cyberware. Um, you can sell your old shit to them and they can also help you change your appearance. So they're kind of like plastic surgeons too, to a certain degree. Yeah. A little bit. So you go down to, uh, Vix. Well, actually, no, you go to the entrance to Vix is like in a back alley that you have to go through Misty's, uh, shop first. Yeah. So you get to meet mm-hmm. Misty for the first time. You don't really talk to her that much, but no, she was like, in the. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. She was in the uh, the se- the the montage sequence in the beginning of the game. Yeah, and when you first start walking through there, like fucking Jackie immediately like just bolts towards her. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll, I'll wait here, Mono. I gotta I gotta catch up with Misty. I gotta see about a girl. Yeah. Um, so so this, those like those two are immediately just fucking like. Hip to hip. Yeah, so this Misty is obviously the, the girlfriend that Jackie was talking about earlier, the, the previous day. Yeah, and she's a really interesting character, and I'm, I'm looking forward to when we can kind of talk about her more. Mm-hmm. Um, because, like, her character is just so unique with how her, like, her brain thinks and shit. Like, yeah. she doesn't think like your typical <clears throat> Night City um, citizen, like... She wants to get out from Night City, but at the same time, she's also... She's kind of apathetic to everything, if you think about it. Well, she, she's kind of, like, hippie-esque. You yes. know what I mean? Like, especially because of all, like, the tarot cards and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. um, she's just very in tune with the world around her and those that are um, within her circle and all that. Yeah. 
Misty is a cool character, but she doesn't really exhibit a lot of emotion, which I feel like was a bit of a missed opportunity. Well, depending on your ending that you choose later on with this DLC, you kind of get to see more of that, but we're a long ways away from being able to talk yeah, about it. She, I, I would admit in that ending, she gets a little bit more bulbous or, you know, joyous or whatever. Oh, she gets bulbous. All right. Bulbous. But M- Missy's a cool character. We'll come back to her. So you go past Misty's shop, you know, where she reads tarot cards. She's basically a hippie, right? She reads your fortune, reads your fucking chakras and everything. And you go down into Vic's, you know, he has like a little cellar type deal or a little basement. Yeah, like he's, his shop isn't, it's not up on ground level. Like you have to go down to a basement, like you said, and go through a couple different doorways and there he is. Yeah. So Vic, you know, he's very much a boxing fan. You go, anytime you go see him, he's watching a boxing match. Yep. And, you know, that's pretty cool about his character. He's old school. He's like a Boston, you know, Boston native, you know, into boxing and, you know, all that kind of shit. Well, we learned later on, too, that he actually used to box with Jackie. That's right, huh? Yeah. Um, Because he always talks about how, um, you know, once you get to that scene, he talks about how he can still feel his punch. Like, he just punched so hard. That's right, yeah. Um. Which and is I, true because he clocked that fucking guy in one hit. We we literally just watched him fucking, well, you watched him fucking Hulk smash a bitch to fucking death by punching him in the skull. Yeah. Um, but I have a theory okay. as to why it is his shop is underground. Hmm. Maybe he can't afford like the the best anesthetics and things like that. So maybe he's underground so that way. Tax free. <clears throat> not tax free screaming oh think about it like what if it's similar to what david had to go Mm -hmm. through you know just bite onto the bar kid well he gives you some anesthetics and he's (laughs) like does that hurt kid no feels like a dream yeah but i mean like because of like where they're situated at maybe he can't get them all the time or like maybe that's from when he first started okay I don't know. That's just a fucking a theory that popped into (laughs) my head but that's just a theory a A game game theory. theory Uh, so you go down in the cellar and you talk to Vic, he, he, you tell him about the virus and everything. He sits you down, uh, gets rid of the virus. And also you tell him how you need to upgrade your cyberware. I'm, uh, I'm going to the major leagues, the big leagues, Vic. It's really happening. Yeah. And there's an option here to pay him up front, which is super weird to me. You, the only time that you've gotten like free reign to go in night city and do shit is immediately afterwards when you leave the building and you're talking to Jackie. Yeah, like, if if you wanted to, like, you didn't have to immediately go with Jackie to go to Vic's. Um, you also... No, I, I guess you can't really leave Vic's once you're there, but, um... You didn't... Like I said, you didn't have to go straight to Vic's. If you wanted to, you could do the NCPD police missions. Yeah. Um, and rack up money that way. And you might be able to get enough, but you're also going to be so low level um that a lot of those those fights are probably going to be somewhat complicated it's just such a weird thing there's such a small window of opportunity for you to get the money to pay him up front 99 percent of people don't do it because they don't realize like oh the fucking shackles are off me i can free roam now yeah um i've i've seen one video it was a probably like a year ago um just happened to like pop up on my youtube feed where i watched the guy do it because he wanted to see if there was going to be a difference between um, you know, paying him up front versus doing how most people fucking do it, where yeah. he he write him a fucking IOU and you go back later. Yeah. Uh, there's no difference. There's no difference. <laughs> the only thing that happens is the mission that you get to pay him back, it's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> so he implants you with uh, a new cybernetic eyewear and also a hand grip. So the hand grip, <clears throat> from what I understand, it's supposed to interact with your weapons to like provide ammo counters and a HUD on your, your eyes. Um, and if you have smart weapons that have like auto aim, it's supposed to interact with them that way too, or tech weapons. Yeah. And it gives you, um, like, a, a reticle more or less. Yes. So you have a thumb, uh, a hand grip, which will help with, uh, weapons. And also you get Kuroshi optics. Yeah. In this particular set of optics, um, it, helps to blur your face from cameras and sentries Mm -hmm. but Vic does tell you just so you know your body is going to be clear as day it's just your face that's blurred out yeah so what else happens um it's a pretty cool sequence where he rips out your eye 
and you get to see your body from a third person perspective. Yeah, because he, you know, you see, he says, uh, okay, kid, it's going to go dark for a second. And then the next thing you see, it's him grabbing the fucking cybernetic eye, like outside of your body and then pushes it in. Yeah. I, I get squeamish when I see that scene. I'm, <laughs> I don't, I'm very particular about my eyes, you know, fucking that's a fear of mine. So when I see that sequence, I'm like, mm. see, that's so funny that like you have a thing with eyes. Meanwhile, I've fucked my eyes up a shit ton. My thing, hands. I don't like seeing hands get fucked up. Oh, I don't care about my hands. <laughs> so that's weird. Dude, especially like fingers, dude. Like, uh, because I play guitar, so like, I, all I those can't... needles are poking into the hands and fucking doing that, all that. The... That doesn't bother me too bad because I'm like, okay, it's fine. Like that's that's meant to happen. Now, if I see someone like, uh, it's gonna be a slight deviation. Uh, the fucking first scene that you have with the werewolf in Resident Evil Village when it bites your fucking fingers off. Yeah. That bothered me so fucking bad. I was like, ah, no, stop, (laughs) please. Uh, So you leave Vix and everything. He's like, all right, kid, go show them what you're made of. And uh, when you just remember when you hit the big leagues, remember the people that were around you. You know, Vic is a good guy. Because now it's time for the big leagues. Sorry. (laughs) God damn it. But Vic's a cool character, you know, we'll come back to him more later on. We'll get to learn more about him as the story progresses. And then we go back to Misty's shop and turns out I, as much as I love Misty, this part is kind of cringe. Uh, Misty's, you know, comforting Jackie. He's on the chair. He's like, your energy is all out of whack, babe. You need to remember to stay away from negative energy fields. I'm like, you in back. Well, I mean, like, it's because she has that uh that like hippie kind of vibe like you know people that are really into tarot cards and crystals and things like that like i guess kind of witchy or it, whatever the fuck you want to call it i i like that personality for her, but just in this particular moment it just was kind of cringe to me it's like your vi- your your aura is not matching my aura babe you know we need to get we need to get your chakras aligned you need to stay away from negative energy fields Bitch, we're in Night City. The whole city's surrounded by negative energy. <laughs> the whole energy. city's a negative energy field. <laughs> but Jackie says, hey, I, I'm kind of preoccupied here, but Dexter Deshaun did ping me while you were talking to Vic. Uh, he's waiting outside. Why don't you go talk to him? He wants to talk to you. Yeah. So you go outside and like down the street is Dexter Deshaun's limo. Well, it's not a really limo. It's like a fucking nice ass cruiser. Yeah. Um, And the bodyguard standing outside lets you in. And you get to see Dexter Deshaun. He's smoking a cigar. And he's like, V in the flesh. Uh, right, right off biz. I got a personal question for you, if you don't mind. And this is the famous quote that we've mentioned so many times. Would you rather, you know, go out in a blaze of glory? Or would you rather, you know, live to the nice ripe age of fucking whatever, pissing your pants and nobody knows who you are? Now, I'm curious. What's your answer to that question? Uh, I think I chose the middle option where nobody remembers you if, if you don't do anything extravagant. I, I forget what the exact quote is, but the only way to get recognized in Night City is if you become a legend. Yeah, and that's that's more or less the option that I chose. It's something along the lines of like wanting to go out as a legend. So, yeah. you know, it's the way of saying, I want to go out fucking guns blazing. I'm going to be the next Johnny Silverhand or whatever. Oh, you chose the top option. I chose the middle option. Yeah, I, I chose the one that was like, I I want to be famous. Like, I, I don't care if I fucking die as long as people remember what I did. Yeah, I think what my character said was uh, nobody's never don't get remembered in Night City. Kind of neutral, you know, apathetic. Yeah. Meanwhile, mine's just like full on. Punch to the dick. Let's fucking go. Let's I go. Woo! Fuck- Woo! <laughs> Legend! <laughs> Woo! Woo! So, Dexter Deshaun poses that, that immense question, right? Like, that's the antithesis of the themes of cyberpunk, right? That we've talked about in the past. Yeah. You know, do you live a life of mediocrity or do you like the, the candle... I think we were talking about making references to Blade Runner at one point in time. The candle, the candle that burns the brightest uh, lives half as long or something like that. Yeah, the candle that burns twice as hot lives half as long. You've, yeah. And you've burned so very bright, my friend. And these are the themes of cyberpunk, you know. What, is, what does it mean to be human? You know, what is life? What is living? Um, are you truly human? Have you lived at all? Uh, how can you live a life in a world that hates you, that it doesn't care if you live or die? And I feel like we're going to be touching on that again when we start going through 
uh, the different side quests because that immediately made me think of um, the the Delamain quest. Oh yeah, like getting to see all those different AIs like have their own personality and their own drive to live. Yeah, that's that's true. I don't uh, do the Delamain missions very often, so I kind of forgot about that part. Uh, well, every time that I have played through it, I do every side quest that I possibly can. But, excuse me, what was fucked up is my first playthrough. Jesus. The, <laughs> uh, the quest for, the, for Carrie. Right. I got like halfway through his, his, uh, his set and I never got anything after. Like, I did everything right. Yeah. Because I did everything the exact same my second time way, or my, my second time through. But it never gave me any more quests after that. So I thought I was done. And then I found out that, you know, He's one of the romanceable characters, and... You're like, fuck! I mean, granted, well, I was a dude, so he would have fucked me, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, I, I always try to do all of the quests, no matter what, but that's just, like, the completionist in my head. Like, if I know it's there and I don't yeah. do it, I get pissed. Right now, on my, my personal playthrough, I'm working on all the NCPD bullshit. Yeah. So, the, the conversation continues on, and, uh... Dexter Deshaun basically says, I got a job for you. We need to cl clip an experimental biochip from Arasaka. And my V, I kind of played him as like, you're going to fuck with Arasaka. That's suicide. And I know it's suicide because I used to work at Arasaka. Yeah. So that's the kind of approach that I took and everything. And Dexter is like, all right, I wouldn't do this if we didn't have a plan. We need to we need to grab an, a, a very expensive piece of hardware called the, the bot. What is the bot called? Um, it's a flathead. The flathead. Thank you. I was drawing a blank on what it was actually called. I'm so, sorry. Was that expo expensive smoking beef? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, was that the expensive smoking? God, we, we just watched Grandma's Boy last night. So but they need to go grab the flathead. And it's essentially a, a camo, like invisibility little drone recon bot. Yeah, like... It's really cool because once you install the hardware, you can control it all with your cybernetics. Like you just have to ping where you want it to go yeah. and it'll, uh, you know, it'll move in that direction. If you needed to hack something specifically, it'll do it. Um, it's just like, a, uh, like a spy new droid. Age, yeah. Like a, a spy droid or like a new age fucking RC. Yeah. In, an infiltrator bot. Yeah. It does re it does reconnaissance. It goes invisible. It can hack shit. It can do all this stuff. And Dexter Deshaun, uh, his plan is to use this bot to get inside Arasaka Tower and you get grab the chip. But the only problem is uh it's owned by Maelstrom. And we haven't talked about Maelstrom very much, but Maelstrom is one of the gangs in Night City. Um, but they take body modification and cybernetics to a whole new fucking level. Most of them don't have faces. Like, they literally just have fucking lights installed in their face. Yeah. And, like, some of them have it to where their fucking eyes and their nose are totally gouged out. How many of, how most of them aren't cyber psychos is beyond me. I don't, I don't fucking get it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me, but Dexter starts talking about how, uh, he already paid, you know, 10,000 eddies for this, fl uh, uh, flatjack from them. The previous leader, his name was Brick, right? Yeah. Um, he paid Brick for it, and I can't remember the the new leader's Royce, name. Royce, I think. Yeah, it's Royce. That's right. Brick is believed to be dead because that's kind of how it usually works with Maelstrom. Whenever the leader gets taken out, the next one comes in. So yeah, all that he really knew was that Royce was the the head honcho, and he was refusing to hand over the uh, the flathead even after they'd already received payment and shit. Yeah, so Dexter wants to send somebody in person for him to make sure that he honors the previous leader's deal. Yeah. Um, and and uh, Maelstrom, we should talk about this and mention this as well, because it's going to be very important when we actually get to this mission. The piece of equipment is Militech owned. Yeah. And we never saw it, but the Maelstrom hijacked this piece of equipment off of a Militech convoy. And they want it back. I can't remember the lady's name. Can, is it? It's not Sandra Dorset. It's uh, but oh, she's like the executive um, that's in charge of Strout. Strout. Something Strout. Something Strout. Yeah, oh. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. But sh this Militech officer 
is in charge of the investigation to find this piece of equipment. Otherwise, it's her ass. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, very excited to get into that mission. Um, so Dexter gives you a shard going over the mission overview and everything, talking about the flathead, talking about Ma uh, Maelstrom. And I love this. It's basically saying, all right, here's your option. Here's your options. Find a way to get this flathead. Yeah. Like you can either, <clears throat> you can either utilize, uh, Stroud or the fuck her name is, um, and try using that as leverage, or you can go talk to them yourself and mm -hmm. see kind of what's going to happen on your own. This is one of the very few missions in this game where there are branching decisions and like di different ways to get to the same destination. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting to see like the different, um, approaches that you can take yes that's why i wanted to end this right here and not get too deep into the missions because that's going to take a lot of time i want to talk about all the different ways that you can complete that mission as well as when you meet evelyn parker because those two missions are going to take up a whole new episode meredith stout meredith stout meredith okay. stout it was going to drive me fucking nuts is if that's we didn't what you're looking it. up yes okay like, it was it's it was just fucking non on me like you gotta fix it. You gotta fix it. You know it ain't right. <laughs> but this is a good place to stop, you know? It, these first few missions, the first three missions, it's just a lot of world building, a lot of dialogue, but, you know, I, I wanted to dig deep into it. I wanted to, you know, really flesh it out because it's your first experience with Night City. I wanted to talk about it at length. Yeah. Um, you know, we get to see a lot of different things. We get to see a bunch of different factions. Um, how exactly the policing works in night city we uh, got to see some inner workings of it uh um, you got to see the beautiful night city at nighttime with the rain and you know absolutely the cinematic fucking drive home is just beautiful you it really pulls you into the world and makes you just want to keep playing gang 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 gang, gang, gang. gang, gang. i can't remember the lyrics to that song but it fucking i don't know i'm just bouncing da, 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 da. it's city a dream city a gang 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 <laughs> it has that song playing as you're driving through night city but anyway this is going to be where we end this episode it's took a lot longer than i thought an hour and some change really i don't know how we fucking did that it was all the rants dude like that it's one thing that's kind of nice like because we have nothing to really follow like we're going to talk into the talk about the missions and yeah. you know we know what we're going to talk about like we're more free reign to like really delve into it and not pay attention so much to the yes. time because while we're doing like lord of the rings or you know something that we have video for we're just like okay okay hold on we're getting close to 30 minutes yeah. but but slow it down yeah <laughs> Well, uh, this is where we're going to end it off. Next episode, um, you'll have to catch us. We're going to get into the All Foods mission, as well as when we meet Evelyn Parker and best girl Judy. Oh, dude. Judy. Judy. Oh, no. I made a fucking male V. No! And you're on console, so you can't download the mod where you can romance her as a fucking... Oh, yeah. There's a mod on PC where you can fucking romance Judy as a male. Yeah, get fucked, you cuck. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is where we're going to end this episode. Uh, thank you guys for your patience and understanding. Thank you guys for dealing with all my coughs and fucking sneezes because I have allergies. Uh, thank you guys for bearing with us as we kind of rough iron out the rough edges of this kind of format or podcast, you know. But we're, we're going to get better, as we said, as time goes. So bear with us. It's a new format for us. But thank you guys for being patient. Thank you guys for dealing with my allergy-ridden ass. Well, I mean... I'll be realistic, like, even though it's a new format, it feels like it's already kind of getting smoothed out pretty, pretty fast. Like, yes. it, it doesn't feel foreign. Like, the first one, like, I was a little nervous going into it. This one, like, this, this feels like how we've been doing it the entire time. Yeah. Even though, like, obviously, like, I know that's not the case, but <laughs> it doesn't feel like we're, we're struggling to make things happen. Like, yeah. it's, everything's just uh, occurring organically, and it's nice. Is this organic? Mm. Oh, mm shit fucking is it, carrots is this good shit <laughs> anyway uh we're tired we're just rambling at this point anyway we'll catch you guys on the next sci-fi sunday my name is adam edgar i am hunter chambliss and we will catch you guys on the flip side ciao bye i don't know uh a happier ending for everyone involved here for folks like us wrong city wrong people a thing of beauty, I know Will never fade away Why should it to me, I know 
said what you had to say, but I think I believe. Goodbye, V. And never stop fighting.